From the academic year 2013 to 2014, 20% of the marks originated from a standard four performance and another 20% from the standard five performance. Errors which pupils were continuously assessed included a number of errors. Um, and on Friday, the Minister of Education announced that the CAC, that is the Continuous Assessment Component of the SE, that is the Secondary Entrance Assessment, has been scrapped. He said that it was a cabinet decision and the move has been welcomed by various stakeholders, the primary and secondary stakeholders involved in this matter. But what does this decision mean for the students? What does it mean for the parents? And what does it mean for the education sector as a whole? We're going to share with you a very short excerpt from the story uh, that we aired on our newscast on Friday and then we'll begin our conversation with the Minister. It's done and over with. The CSC components of the secondary entrance exam will be no more. This year is the last year for students writing the SEE who will be saddled and burdened with having to deal with the CAC, the Continuous Assessment Component. The minister described it as a teaching mechanism the ministry had to disband. It was a system that was not carefully thought out. It was a system that was imposed on our students and our teachers without the discussions that were necessary with our major stakeholders. This aspect, which was introduced in 2012, sought to broaden the curriculum testing. Education Minister Anthony Garcia says an injustice had been done to parents, teachers and students who use a CAC by causing undue stress. Now the omitted subjects for toll will still be taught but just not tested. President of the Primary School's Principals Association said stress on the teaching staff was evident in teacher absenteeism and teacher... A uh, short excerpt there from our story. The minister and officials from the Education Ministry join us on set this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Now, Minister, the announcement seems to have come as a shock. A lot of people were not expecting that announcement on Friday. How was the decision made? Well, the decision was not made hurriedly or arbitrarily. I can safely say that this was in the mix or in the making for quite some time. In December last year, Cabinet discussed the matter because there were a number there were concerns expressed by our major stakeholders, tutor, the National Parent Teacher Association, and parents in particular, and of course those in the school system, our teachers and our principals. And the Cabinet had recommended that they will wait until the National Consultation on Education, which was held in February, so that after that we will be able to garner the views of those persons who express some point of view with respect to the essay. And uh, as a result of that, then we decided last Thursday at the meeting of Cabinet that the time has come for us to put an end to the CSC. Ms. Sarah, let me ask you this question. Uh, the two Cabinet decision. Did this arise of the consultation itself? Was that one of the findings of the consultation? Well, certainly the consultation added to uh, Minister mentioned that we looked at this even before the consultation. A report was done within the ministry um, last year, and in that report highlighted some of the very same issues that came up during the consultation. In other words, uh, the consultation added to what we were seeing um, prior to that, um, and, and they really stem from two key issues. One is um, concerns by teachers, stakeholders about on, on the number of assessments being administered and the stress that is with this, with this, um, it's causing with respect to parents and teachers within the system. And the other more fundamental issue was the apparent, the apparent contradictory purposes of SCE, which is really geared towards placement and the CSC, which is formative, that is geared towards supporting teaching and learning. Um, the view expert expressed by the technical officers that since we are looking at SC, which is placement, but then that in the context of a formative assessment, which is geared towards promoting student learning is contradictory, and therefore, rather than focusing on teaching and learning, the CAC just now focus on assessments and um, taking away time from teaching and learning and also teachers and students focusing on getting the highest scores as opposed to meaningful learning. So have we returned to a one exam, one final exam for 100% yes. as of next year? But that is still being considered. Again, we have, at the National Education, we have to engage with our stakeholders 
and then we come to a final decision. But as it stands now, next year students will be writing the essay next year, will be writing that exam in the areas of English language, mathematics, and creative writing. We are not yet, uh, we have not yet decided whether it will be over one day or whether it will be over two days. That will rest with the technical and of education after having discussions with our major stakeholders. Yes, is it not, if you talk about uh, assessment and looking at continuous assessment, everyone would talk about the fact that they thought that the SE itself, that this one-off exam, there are students who don't do well on the exam conditions, you may be having an off day, you may be sick. Returning to one major exam is a retrograde step? No, I don't think so. As the DCO explained just now, the continuous assessment component purpose was fundamentally different from the purpose of the SEA. The SEA is an exam whereby the, the scores made by students will be used to select those students for the secondary schools. As you know, parents have a choice, and that choice is enshrined in the constitution of this country. So they will make their choices, but based on the performance of the students, the students will be admitted to certain secondary schools. Whereas the SC, where the CAC component is supposed to be, as the CSF thought, it is supposed to trace the development of the students. And there's a conflict between the, these two these two issues. And that led us and those who are involved in education to decide that the time has come to put an end to the CAC. So I understand there are two different objectives. But should we not over? Um, should there not be an overhaul of the education system in its in its entirety? That there is continuous assessment. That you understand the gaps and the needs of not only the student but the teaching staff as well. Well, overall of the education system, yes. But let, let me just focus on the, the, the continuous assessment component. Um, continuous assessment has been in the school system for the longest while. What has happened with CAC? is that the requirements for putting that score towards a final assessment created or influenced the number of assessments and changed the conditions under which it was administered. So that what you had is teachers focusing and spending a lot of time actually administering these assessments and to ensure reliability we have to look at the number of assessments which have influenced that and, and thereby derail the whole process. The, the, the removal of CAC from the as a component from SC doesn't mean that those subject areas are going to be removed from the curriculum or that continuous assessment, that is where teachers assess students and use that to inform whether remediation or you move on to the next step. So that process continues. The difference is that we are not put, putting it in a high stake environment where the focus changes. So teachers will be more comfortable to assess based on their teaching and learning pace and also in terms of student need as opposed to I have to get a score by this time going forward. Just let me add what the CEO is saying. Continuous assessment has been in the system from that kingdom come. You are aware of term tests, you are aware of weekly tests, all these are aspects of continuous assessment. So it doesn't mean that we are throwing out of the window the whole, the whole aspect of continuous assessment. It will be continued. The important thing is that for, uh, for examination purposes, we found that the continuous assessment was not serving its purpose. Or is there a possibility that the exam, the continuous assessment component part of it will return in the future? And what about the students who are in standard four, uh, and it's also I think in standard three as well, who have already uh, submitted or have started or there are scores registered to them? What's going to happen to that? The decision of cabinet was that this would be the last year for the CAC. So students who are at present in standard four and will be moving into standard five they will not be saddled with the burden of CAC. In 2012, at a press conference, the then Minister Gopi Singh said that, uh, and I think that was the initial stages of the program, said that there was a $30 million price tag attached to trade teachers. How much money has been spent on the program from then till now? Well, I don't have the exact figures, but I can tell you the figure that we got from the school system is that the teachers were not adequately trained. And the first $30 million was spent it meant that that was money wasted because the, student, the teachers and the principals have not been given the, the requisite training. And that is one of the reasons why we had so many problems with the CAC.
Was it an ill-conceived concept? Certainly, it was ill-conceived, it was rushed, there was no discussion with the major stakeholders. It was just forced on the school population. What is the possibility that it will return? Well, that depends on discussions that, that we need to have. I keep saying that we need to involve our major stakeholders in all decisions that we take where education is concerned. Ms. Hammer, at the consultation, did they say they wanted no part of the CAC assessment? Well, essentially, um, the, the, the majority of our stakeholders indicated that uh, or opted to ask for the removal of CAC. Um, but let me add um, one, one other dimension, and I think people are not aware of it. There is a design element with this assessment. So, for example, for the SEA, those components that go for placement, traditionally, the exam is designed to really separate students. In other words, you need to have that happening to be able to place. Mm -hmm. When you look at the CAC component, and if we were to just look at that alone, the place student where you had the very process which allows students to improve, you have bunching of scores. So that if you were to use CAC to place students, you will not be able to do it simply because the scores are bunched together. And therefore, if we focus on the purpose of SC, which is placement, then you can say that the CAC is not adding value to the placement process. How will students be placed now? They will be placed on the basis of their performance in the SA exams. Will they be zoned? Zoning is something that we have to discuss very carefully. There must be very careful discussions. I just mentioned a while ago that parents have the right to choice. Mm -hmm. And if parents are given that right, and, and incidentally that right is enshrined in our constitution, section 4 of the constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, gives to the parents the right to choose the school for, the, for their students. If we zone, then we'll be taking away from the parents the right to choose. So zoning could take place only if there is an amendment to section 4 of the constitution of Trinidad and Tobago. We will continue our discussion, but it is time for the 6.30 news update. Jesse Ramday, who was my saver this morning, is on set. Uh, Jesse really helped me out this morning, but Jesse's on for the news update. Jesse, good morning. How